Hi, this is John Rowland with Holland Park Lapidary, and uh, I'm going to show you some of the features and what we did with the new core drill machine. Uh, basically, the concept of it comes from our our commercial core drill, which uh, we've been building for quite a few years now. Uh, what I wanted to do with this machine is to come out with a less expensive machine that still has a lot of capabilities that uh, people can put in their shops. And, and basically the concept behind this machine is that this one machine, uh, if you're doing spheres, this can out preform 10 saws. Simultaneously running. You can run 10 saws in your shop, you'll get more preforms out of this thing and your preforms will be better. That's why we built it in the first place for our cutting shop. And now what we're doing is we repackaged it and been able to uh, make it more affordable for a lot of the smaller shops that are running two, three, four saws in preforming. Um, and we haven't compromised anything. If anything, we've made it better because part of what we'll do with the, the concept that came out of this machine is we'll go back to the big cord drill and we're going to put a lot of the same stuff back in it because we like it better. So um, basically inside the head, we have these, these big linear slides. Uh, these are 40 millimeter and we have a bearing that's six inches long on the bottom and a, another one on the top. So this whole area is riding on a bearing on both sides. What that does is that really keeps the head stable and level. And uh, I did it in this one casting, which is a little bit of a bear to a machine, but it really makes the head better. And of course, if you're doing volume, then casting is always cheaper. So. We have a stainless steel shaft. It's a three, uh, 316 stainless and uh, our, our rotating union. This is how we feed the coolant down into the drill. Then we come across with uh, timing, timing style pulleys uh, up into the hex drive. This hex drive shaft is then run by the motor. I'll show you on another machine how that works. The, we'll walk around the front here. Basically, uh, the hydraulic cylinder is run with just simple air pressure. You can use a little tiny uh, air compressor. Uh, typically we run, uh, I don't know, 80, 90 PSI. It depends, on, uh, it depends on what you're doing with it, the size of the bits you're running and stuff. But these two reservoirs here, uh, we've, they basically uh, are, are they're filled with oil. Now, there's a process for how you fill them so you, you don't overfill them, uh, which is pretty simple. I'll explain that in another video. But uh, basically what that allows is instead of a pneumatic, the pneumatic feed would be really jerky. But the oil, because we can take the oil and, and the cylinder is actually moving with oil in it, then it has that very smooth motion like a hydraulic cylinder. Um, the, this this block and these two lines here what this is this is a bypass so this bypasses your feed so if you are reversing the head back up after you finish a cut you open this valve and you would this this actuator the forward is down backwards is up so you pull it up and open this valve and the ram will come up um, if you're feeding down then you would go forward is down your metering valve is closed and you can start your feed rate you'll see on our other machine we have a digital readout i'll show you that um, if you are above it you can wrap it down and get close and then start feeding but this controls the feed rate right here it's a really simple system very few moving parts in in the feed mechanism and that makes it really really reliable so Talk about the variable frequency drive uh, too. i'll go over to another machine where i can show you that so this is a completed Would part. You want to show them this one. Okay. I, I, I'm going to show them the, the completed one here. This is the completed drivetrain. Now, basically, there's another timing pulley inside of this, and this guard, you know, covers the belt. The shaft is still exposed. It's an industrial piece of equipment. There's not really any way to get around that. Uh, it's not dangerous. You just don't want to wear loose clothing or have loose hair blowing around in a fan that, when the shaft is spinning, you could get caught up into it. You never should have your hands in this region when you're operating the drill or down underneath the drill, and there's no need to. Uh, what this allows is power transmission without the head being really heavy, 
and uh, it, it's a real simple mechanism for producing really consistent cutting. Now you'll see there's a little sensor here. This is a magnetic linear uh, uh, digital sensor. What it allows us to do is we can be able to look at our feed rate and our position on the machine. So this digital readout, what I typically do is if I put a bit in the machine, I'll bring the bit down to where either I'm touching the table or maybe I'm six millimeters above the table, like a quarter inch above the table. And then I can take this and I can, I can zero it. So F, F enter and clear set and that sets zero. So I can set zero for different bits, for different uh, things that I'm doing. If I'm cross drilling, I'm, my zero might be a little higher because I don't want to go all the way through my stone. But then as it's cutting, I know how much I have left to cut. If I look at this and it says, and it has an inch millimeter mode, I always do it in millimeters because I'm looking for a feed rate of like one millimeter every 15 seconds. Um, so uh, basically this gives us a really nice view of our, our movement and where we are in the rock. Cause once a bit goes down into the rock, you can't see where the end of the bit is. If you don't have a zero, you can start drilling through your table and not even know it. If you set your zero, then you know exactly where you are. You know, okay, I'm getting close to the end of the rock. And when you're, you know, if you're six millimeters or eight millimeters away and you're drilling a big rock, you know, that's good enough. You can back your ram out, pull your rock out, tap it out. And you know, you don't have any surprises that way. Again, the same setup. This is what it looks like with all the covers on. Um, we, we have uh, a splash guard here um, and, uh, and basically it's, it's set up so you can also put an Everclean on it. The reservoir tank will go right in the middle underneath it. Uh, that gives you probably, I don't know, that's probably a 10 gallon reservoir. Uh, so with the Everclean hooked up to the reservoir, you can be cleaning the oil as you're drilling and it makes uh, a really reliable system and you don't end up changing your oil. Cause when you're drilling, when I need to drill like this, you can drill so much stuff so fast that you can basically pollute five, five gallons in a day. Yeah. Uh, if you got an Everclean on it, you're just pulling the mud out, pulling the mud out and you don't ever change your oil. Talk about the VFD. This is uh, the VFD that we use. What a VFD stands for is variable frequency drive. Now, when this is all hooked up and running, this gives you a digital readout, which is related to the frequency of the drive. As you increase the frequency, obviously you increase the speed. Um, now, uh, on our bigger drill, we have a, a, a correlation between frequency and RPM. Uh, although there are some things, I, as I do some videos, I, I talk and I may have talked about this in some of the other videos that what I always listen for is when the bit starts to sizzle. It, it, you'll hear kind of like the sizzling sound when the diamond is cutting optimally. It's like bacon frying. Um, and that's when you know you're at the right speed for that bit. Small bits, obviously you turn them a lot faster. You get into you know a four inch bit, you're gonna turn it a good bit slower because the circumference of the bit is is longer so your surface speed on the segments needs to be a little slower to hit that optimal speed. Uh, what the, fre the variable frequency drive allows us to do is two really nice things. One, we can control the speed of a uh, three-phase AC motor with it. Now, most people don't have three-phase in their house. And before it used to be you have to go buy a phase converter or do all this, you know, like uh, by a, uh, they made solid state phase converters and all those were really kind of cumbersome and not efficient. These VFDs, uh, we've been using these now for in our shop for uh, seven, eight years. Uh, actually, maybe more than that. Um, but uh, they're super reliable and you can take a 220 single phase and convert it to a 223 phase. So if you'll notice all the motors that we're running are three phase motors, which then allows you to do speed control. And 
So that, that makes the drivetrain in these things really simple. The very first core drill that I built had this crazy variable pitch pulley and, and everything, and it was really expensive because I didn't have VFDs back then. They, they were so, the, the VFDs were too expensive. Now these VFDs are much, much less expensive and very, very reliable and, and give you a lot of flexibility to be able to run a machine at multiple speeds uh, the only thing you have to consider when you're running a VFD, when you start slowing it way down, your motor will generate some heat because the fan in the motor also slows down. So you'll see all of ours, we've mounted a secondary fan. So when you're running the bigger bits and you're running slower, that that fan continues air movement. And like we run in our, in our factory, we're running these great big 5.5 kilowatt motors, which is seven and a half horsepower drills and we have the fans on those. You can put your hand on the motor at any point in time and it's cool. It doesn't get hot at all. Partly because the VFD is really efficient for how it drives the motor, but also because we have the secondary cooling fan on it. Do you want to talk about the big drills? Uh, well, they're pretty much the same. Like the head and the drive mechanism, I kept all that standard. The rotating union, I kept standard. Uh, the framework is bigger and heavier. Um, the tray moves up the, and down. The, the lower tray has a, uh, the, we're actually working on putting the gear motors on. It has uh, a screw feed with a chain drive linking the right and the left. So you can drop the tray way down. Uh, say for instance, you're drilling lamps. If you're drilling a cylindrical lamp, uh, you can drop the tray down, pull the ram up and you can use a longer bit and drill and then shift your tray up and drill further so you can accomplish a really deep drill with this with this machine um, so it gives you a, more flexibility it's more expensive machine because it's got a lot more hardware on it uh, and heavier hardware and you know bigger motor so you can turn up to a 12 inch bit on this machine so you can cut 12 inch balls uh, which, you know, if you're cutting 12 inch balls, you're paying for your machine pretty fast. Yep.